Hi, this is Brian Aldrich from 4th Street Software, and today I'd like to show you a little bit about the ballpark editor in the 4th Street baseball game. So, let's take a look at a team here in the American League. Let's go to New York and uh, check out the ballpark here. If I click on this little flag here, it's the ballpark and weather editor. And it's going to start spinning up here. As you can see, it's drawing out the ballpark for the uh, old Yankees team back in 1960. And these are the actual dimensions of that ballpark. So this is Yankee Stadium number one, the house that Ruth built. It's also got a weather editor over here, so it tells you a little bit about uh, what kind of weather is going to occur in, in this case, April. I can change that to May or September or what have you here, and it'll tell me a little bit more about what the uh, weather averages were. So, for example, in June, the average high temperature was 79. Average low was 64. These are in degrees Celsius Fahrenheit, of course. Um, the average then was about 71 and a half degrees. It's an open-air stadium. Uh, the rainfall, that may be a, kind of a, a funny number here. It's 351, but if you hover the mouse over the rain label there, it says it's in inches times 100. These uh, controls are not capable of having uh, decimal points placed in them. And the wind is the average wind speed in miles per hour. All right, these numbers are what are generated by the computer based upon the information that you input down here. So all of these are fully editable. You can change the wind speed to whatever you like, for example. So if you're looking for a, you know, a, a nice gale air of 100 miles an hour, go for it. But that's probably not something that's wise to do. All right, so we have that. Now, um, these are all ranging on a 100-point scale. Actually, a 0 to 99 point scale. So a, a random generator at the beginning of each game determines whether or not it is windy. And if it is windy, if the wind is blowing in, which is what this downward green arrow is representing, or blowing out, which is what this one is representing. The odds of rain, so 15 out of 100 chances uh, in April, you're going to have some possible rain occur. That doesn't mean you'll see rain on that day necessarily, but the odds of it increase because of that. Uh, every inning, it's another random generator determines whether or not rain actually does occur. The temperature, if it's cold, we've got a zero or one chance, so uh, a couple of chances in April to see some cold weather in New York. The rest of the year, not so much. Hot temperatures in June, July, and August, September, we might see a little bit of heat. So that affects uh, some of the pitching um, elements that are in this game. Okay, way over on the left, this controls what the ballpark looks like. So I have depths, I have heights of the fences, and I have some areas that may or may not be shaded depending upon what's going on. Yeah, you can also set distances here, some fence distances if you'd like. Um, not all of those are, are able to be changed possibly, but they're all right there. Okay, so for example, if I want to alter Yankee Stadium here a little bit, I can do that by maybe changing the depth. Maybe I want to set this fence way back. So here's Death Valley out here. Instead of setting the fence uh, down the line at 12, let's increase it to a whopping 19 just for fun. And we'll go ahead and save that. And now it'll redraw my ballpark. And as you can see, it moved the fence way out to depth 19, making it much more difficult for a player to hit a home run to left field, especially down the line. All right, but that's not how it actually was, so let's move the fence back in. You'll notice that 301 went along with the panel, even though it wasn't there. In order for that to change, you would literally have to change this little uh, entry right there. 
Um, the average fence distance in 4th Street Baseball is 15. So there are some teams that might have that going around. In this particular season, the old fences were kind of herky-jerky and all over the place, which is kind of the novelty of it and kind of the fun part of it. At least I am of that impression. So you can kind of see some of the different ones here. Not sure about Kansas City. I'd like to show you one that was, oh, this was fairly symmetrical. So right around 15 all the way across. You can see all the way through left field. This one is average. So that means you're just as likely if you get a dice roll to hit a ball over the fence as you are not. Um, you may also notice here in the middle, in uh, lanes F, G, H, I, and J, they're a little higher. The fence is higher. And down here inside the uh, panels, you can see that those fence heights have been set to 2, which means they are approximately 20 feet tall. And that makes it a little bit dip more difficult to put the ball over the fence. So we can change this too. Let's uh, go with the same lane we did here in the New York Stadium, except Instead of setting the fence height to 1, let's set it to, oh, I don't know, how about 5? So that makes it a 50-foot high fence. And you might chuckle at that a little bit, saying, well, nobody did that. Actually, that's not true. I'll show you a couple of them. You notice the uh, fence got much larger there, much higher. Boston's, everybody knows the Green Monsters, about 30, I believe, 7 feet tall. So it has a fence height of 3, so roughly 30 feet. But in 1960, the Dodgers played at L.A. Coliseum. And the L.A. Coliseum was actually constructed as a football stadium, so they had to do a little... Been a monkey around there. It was a 40 some high foot fence. I believe it was just mesh um, put up in left field to make it a little bit more difficult for home runs to be hit out of. Uh, one player that played for the Dodgers back then who was a master at hitting the ball over that fence was Wally Moon. He was a left handed hitter. And you may have heard of a moonshot. Well, that's uh, my belief anyway, or my understanding of where that came from. Wally would hit moonshots over the left field fence. All right, the shaded areas tell you a little bit too. If the ball hits that area of the fence, it is more likely to come back into play and be fielded as a single. So it doesn't give the runner enough opportunity to... to uh, get his usual double, which you normally would get up after hitting a ball off the, uh, say, the left field wall or something. So let's go to Philadelphia here, which I believe was Scheib Park back then. And you can see we got some pretty deep fences, but let's change it in lane L to uh, oh, a shaded area. Let's put a couple of them in there just for fun. Now we'll redraw it. And you can see right now, before I did the revision there, we had a solid color. Now it's shaded, so if the ball happens to strike these two areas in lane L, the ball will bounce back to the fielder, and this is a single, so the, the runner will have to decide, the manager will have to decide whether or not to send the runner to second in an attempt to get a double. All right, I'm going to move that back to normal. Okay, now, before you start play, you'll want to have a ballpark for all the teams in the league. And to do that automatically, all you have to do is to go ahead and click on this button. And you've seen that before in some of the other uh, options. What it means is spread to all teams. So this will spread and construct a ballpark based upon the information here for all teams. Okay, now I'm going to open up a different organization here, one that uh, hasn't really been used before. Here's that Yankee League that I made earlier, only this time it's for 2015. 
So I'm going to pick uh, oh, Team 5 out of the crowd here. And we're going to construct a ballpark for it. Now, it initially places in a default set of values. And as I mentioned earlier, the depth uh, for these is an average of 15. So first of all, let's set the weather here. And I, I don't know where Team 5 is, but I'm going to pick a city to import the weather from. So let's just go Milwaukee. And it'll ask you whether or not you actually want to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So it just populates all the weather data for every month of the year. So it's a little bit of a time saver. You could do that by looking up some national weather forecast data and whatnot. But I'm just it's, it's an easier way to do that. All right, now I'm going to save it. It's probably a good idea always to save this. It'll just regenerate the park again for you. And now let's uh, change things. So let's make this an interesting park. The minimum you can set these is at 10. So we'll have some really short fences. And then just for fun, we'll make some really deep. Really, really deep. Really, really, really deep. 20 is the max. And we'll just have a little fun with it. Just for fun. Make it a goofy looking deal here. Okay, now I'm going to save it just to show you what the present configuration looks like. And boom. Beautiful. Alright, let's change the height. The fence height a little bit. By the way, you notice I put a depth of 10 here. That will automatically make these too high. So it might be a better idea to change these to 11. I think that's uh, something the programmer, that would be me, should probably do by himself to prevent any errors from occurring there. But let's set the uh, fence height to about 30 feet on those three sections. I'm reminded once I go up here there's a little paint brush too. So now I've got a 30 foot high fence there. Let's change the, uh, the the color of the fence to oh, teal, I suppose. Well, how about blue? Blue looks better. And it'll go ahead and redraw that. Only this time all the fence will show up in blue. Shaded region. So let's make it shaded in C. We'll just save that and it'll redraw it for us automatically. So it changed it a little bit. So if the ball happens to strike that region, it'll be a single instead of a double like it normally would. And we can also set up the fence depth. So this one is obviously a little shallow. Set it at 295 feet. I guess we can change those. Those are not uh, normal places that these are. But... Uh, let's put it in E instead. It looks like about 390 feet. H, on the other hand, is very deep. So let's set it to 442. K is way in. So let's set that one to 355. And we'll do N and O both just for the heck of it. So let's go uh, 312 and 292. And now we'll save this, and what that will do is just plop in those measurements onto the fence. Not a necessity, and sometimes, as you can see, the uh, numbers don't show up exactly where you would like them to, but it has a little aesthetic appeal to it. 